Besides my K through 12 schooling, I've also attended college, massage school, courses in poetry, fiction writing, cake decorating, self-defense classes, meditation, yoga, spiritual retreats, and much, much more. For the most part, I truly enjoy learning new things. But there was a time when I really, really didn't want to go to school. The year was 1979, and it was the beginning of, dun, 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 seventh grade. I had attended a fairly small elementary school just about a half mile from our house. Everyone walked to school in those days. We knew most families by their last names. Gar, Kent, Marcinia, Santini. I'd had some of my classmates since kindergarten. I got excellent grades, enjoyed my teachers, had several good friends, proudly took part in Gordon School presentations, and I was a, phys a presidential physical fitness award winner three years in a row. Life was good, but all that changed in junior high. On the first day, I was really nervous. There were class changes every 45 minutes. The school was four floors high, and due to several building additions, no logical order for room numbers. There were locker combinations to remember and a 20 minute lunch period to rush through. Additionally, my walk to school was now two miles long. Coming from a school where there were about 30 kids in the sixth grade, I was now attending seventh grade with about 300 students. I was a small fish in a large, dreadful pond. My experience could best be described as shell-shocked. On my long walk home that day, I theorized there may have been a secret summer memo sent to other seventh grade girls. I imagined it said something like, to fit in, you will need to wear makeup, apply perfectly, so practice it over the summer. Wear very tight designer jeans, preferably Jordache or Calvin Klein, and style your hair like Farrah Fawcett or one of the other Charlie's Angels. You should not be surprised to hear your classmates swear or talk about sex. You should play it cool if you see any of them smoking near school grounds. And if you plan on getting good grades, be prepared to be teased. In fact, be prepared to be ridiculed for anything that sets you apart from the masses, whether it be you're too short, too tall, too skinny, too fat, too smart, too dumb, etc., etc., etc. I remember going home that first day and crying. I asked my older sister, why hadn't she warned me? My bookish sister, who never paid any attention to fads or peer pressure, simply shrugged her shoulders. At dinner, I pleaded with my parents to let me attend Catholic school like my friend Angela. They laughed and assured me I'd get the hang of things soon enough. I was doubtful. I'm not gonna lie, that first year was pretty rough for me, but eventually I found a good core group of friends and I got through it. That's one thing I learned. If you've got a good friend or two, you can pretty much get through anything. That being said, I'm very thankful of the friends I've made at UUCCI. They really helped me feel welcome when I moved here from Michigan, and they've also helped me get through these recent challenging times. Thank you very much, friends. I cannot go to school today, said little Peggy Ann McKay. I am the measles and the mumps, a gash, a rash, and purple bumps. My mouth is wet, my throat is dry. I'm going blind in my right eye. My tonsils are as big as rocks. I've counted 16 chicken pox and oh, there's one more. That's 17 and don't you think my face looks green? My leg is cut, my eyes are blue. It might be instamatic flu. I cough <coughs> and sit and chew and gasp and choke. I'm sure that my left leg is broke. My hip hurts when I move my chin, my belly button's caving in. My back is wrenched, my ankle sprained, my appendix pain each, times, each time it rains. My nose is 
cold. My, no my toes are numb. I have a sliver in my thumb. My neck is stiff. My spine is weak. I hardly whisper <clears throat> when I speak. My tongue is filling up my mouth. I think my hair is falling out. My elbow's bent that my spine ain't straight. My temperature is 108. My brain is shrunk. I cannot hear. There's a hole inside my ear. Oh, I have a hangnail and my heart is... What? What's that? What's that you say? You say today is Saturday? Oh, goodbye. I'm going out to play. Let's have one day for girls and boyses when you can make the grandest noises. Screech, scream, holler, yell. Buzz a buzzer, clang a bell. Sneeze, hiccup, whistle, shout. Laugh until your lungs wear out. Toot a whistle, kick a can, bang a spoon against a pan. Sing, yodel, bellow, hum, blow a horn. Beat a drum, rattle a window, slam a door, scrape a rake across the floor, use a drill, drive a nail, turn the hose on the garbage pail, shout, Yahoo, hurrah, hooray, turn up the music all the way, try and bounce your bowling ball, ride a skateboard up the wall, Chomp your food with a smack and a slurp. Chew, chomp, hiccup, burp. One day a year, do all of these. The rest of the days, be quiet, please. Oh, thank God that's over. A moment of silence. Whew. What was I thinking? Or better yet, another question. What was Lori thinking letting me get away with that? Breathe in, breathe out. Okay, maybe that moment of silence was good for some of you. It did feel nice after all to try and settle down a little bit. And regardless of your ages, whether we're starting pre-K this year or the 91st grade, it is good at times to remember the lessons we can hear when we are quiet and still. Oh, but geez, I just, I don't, it just seems like being silent right now is so hard. Being silent seems so peaceful, so calm. When on the inside, I don't feel calm. I don't feel peace. I feel anxious and angry sometimes. I feel conflicted and uncertain about the future of our world. Oh, why do we have to have a moment of silence when it feels like what we really need is a moment of noise, a moment of scream, of, uh, to stomp our feet, to rip a piece of paper or break a pencil? Some of you are starting school this week or your kids or grandkids are and Oh, I am sure the apple of angst doesn't fall far from the tree. I expect you too want to scream at times or perhaps weep. And guess what? It's okay. It's okay to feel all these things, to be angry and sad, to be worried and scared. It's okay no matter your age, no matter if you are starting a new year of school or if you are a lifelong student of life, it's okay. I want you to hear that it's okay to scream, to shout, to weep. It's okay to feel all of your feelings. It's okay here, here in this place, this weird, virtual purgatory that we are all in, but thankfully together. It's okay if it seems hard to settle your mind or quiet your heart. In fact, I want to prove it to you. I know that many of you have had a few really hard months 
that all of us, each in our own way, has struggled during this pandemic. And now, to be starting another school year, or to be entering the contentious fall election cycle, or to be stuck in limbo in your job or personal lives for an indefinite length of time, this can be even more difficult, even unbearable at times. And so I say, let's rebel. Let's push back, at least this Sunday. Let's push back against the calm hearts who love the moment of silence. Let's say, not I. I do not want to be silent right now. I want to make noise, to let my emotions out, and to do so not alone, but in community where my moment of noise can join your moment of noise, and together our cacophonous noises can surround us all. And if I'm honest, I'm not sure what exactly we will be surrounded by, but perhaps, just like a moment of silence for some, we might also find some peace and calm from our little liturgical rebellion. So, and Lori, you can't stop me on this one, you can't. We're gonna have, all of us, a little moment of noise. Not a whole day, like the old anarchist Shel Silverstein suggestion, uh-uh, but a moment. And before we get all a little nervous and shy, like it's the first day of school or something, I have an idea. So in just a second, I'm gonna unmute everyone at the same time, strength in numbers, right? Strength in numbers. So I'll unmute everyone at the same time, and then I will count to three. So there's no surprises. I'll count to three and then say, go. And then we will have just five seconds. Five seconds to make whatever noise or gnashing of teeth, what even is a gnash anyway, or stomping, whatever you wanna do, five seconds. But you know what I think? I think that that will be enough, just five seconds to get a lot of this stuff a lot of this stuff that's been bottled up inside of us out, okay? So now is the moment if you wanna do some vocal warm-ups or grab a number two pencil or a picture of an old boyfriend. Now is the time to let go of embarrassment and a sense of decorum, right? Okay, are you ready? Okay, I can tell we have some noise makers here today. Okay, so I'm gonna unmute you all now. So one second, instruments down, okay. And you might have to click agree. So I think I've done it. I think you might just have to unmute yourselves. Hi. Yeah, everyone unmute yourselves if, all right, so, okay, good. Whew. Okay, so now we are all unmuted. The impending chaos is palpable, okay? So I'm going to count to three, okay? I'm gonna to count to three, everyone listen. I'm gonna to count to three and then together, okay? I'm gonna to count to three and then together we are all gonna have a moment of noise, like a moment of silence, whatever that looks like, or should I say sounds like for you. We will have a moment of noise for five seconds and I will count with my fingers so you know when to stop. And of course, for the choir members here, please feel free to hug if you wish. And if you happen to laugh, if you happen to laugh at this, that's okay too. Because remember, laughter is a wonderful noise. Okay, here we go. On go. One, two, three, go. Oh my gosh. Oh. Wow. wow. I'm going to have to just mute everyone because I don't know what will happen if we let this go any longer. This chaos, this, this noise, wow. This rebellion may turn into a revolution. 
if we don't be careful here. Wow. So why did we do that? What was the point? Am I up to my old tricks? Or is it just what might be needed right now? Look, none of us could have predicted where we are today or that tomorrow our kids and families in this congregation will start another year of school that will feel like anything but. Our children, our community, this congregation, which has now been predominantly online for the past five months, this is starting to get weary. Or perhaps our weariness is starting to get to us in very real ways. And so we need catharsis sometimes. I love that word, catharsis. Catharsis, it comes from the Greek word katharos, which means pure, and katharin, which means cleanse, a pure cleanse. Catharsis is like a pure cleanse by its modern definition. Catharsis is the process of releasing and thereby providing relief from strong or repressed emotions. Perhaps that moment of noise was more needed than we first thought. I'm also just reflecting this morning of how bizarre and surreal this current situation we are facing is. It's one of these, one of those situations where it's hard to know whether to cry or laugh or yell or just be numb. I think about our children and I wonder what this year will be like for them, what this year will be like for all of us. And I'm filled with lots of emotions because I know each of them, and that each of you, that all of us are from the moment of our birth, from the moment of our birth, a candle of light and love and warmth in this world. I also know that the winds of change and pandemic and injustice threaten our little candles in the wind. These little lights of ours, our children, each of us as children of life, it's so hard to know how these next few months will unfold. But this I do know, in times when the winds of this world rise up and when that essential light, that spark of the divine within each of us is threatened, that that, that is when it is time to share our light and warmth with one another. One candle in the wind is quite vulnerable. Two, a little less so. Five, ten, fifty, a hundred, a thousand, five thousand candles in the wind. When we come together as a community to offer support amidst our grief and our complex feelings, our strength in numbers fortify our light our spark, our flame, this chalice that is a symbol of the life we share together. So as we go into this week of uncertainty and change, let us all remember the need, the important, essential need to feel our feelings, all of them, the strength that we can find when we choose to be in community and the love. May we hold to the love, the real love and beauty that shapes this place, UUCCI, even in this state of virtual purgatory. And I hope, I hope our children know that we love them. They will need it now more than ever, and perhaps, perhaps that is a reminder of something that we all need. We all need now and always. May it be so, and amen.